We all want to optimize. We want to find the optimum. We want to take a shortcut. We want to find the trunk route to success. Yet sometimes the optimum isn't where we expect it to be. So in this video, I want to share some of my thoughts about finding the optimum. Finding the optimum is a natural instinct. We all have it. And I've seen it in management for as long as I can remember through my career, from continuous improvement to business process re-engineering to lean. All of those kinds of initiatives and more have all been hooked around the idea that we can optimize what we do. And I think it's the right instinct. The trouble is we don't always look in the right places to find it. And of course, as a project manager, we work in a particularly complex and demanding environment. So finding an optimum is a particular value, but it's also particularly difficult because each project is different to the last. And therefore, learning lessons from one project and applying them to the next can be tricky. That, of course, is why we have methodologies. That's why we document best practice and conduct lessons learned meetings. But learning lessons isn't enough. Applying those lessons isn't enough. What we have to do is constantly monitor the impact of the changes we make, because sometimes we do the right things for the right reasons and then discover they just don't work. They should work. They seem obvious. They worked last time. So what's going wrong? Have you heard of William Stanley Jevons? No, I thought not. Not as many people have as perhaps should. So who is William Stanley Jevons? Jevons was a 19th century economist working during the second great age of steam. The first great age was when steam engines were first harnessed and the industrial revolution really took shape. Steam was starting to power everything and it was making possible industrial production of things which up until then had been luxury or once in a lifetime purchases. But now engines were becoming far more efficient and it took far less coal to power them. Which, if you translate that to modern times, sounds like really good news. More efficient engines using less coal should mean lower consumption of coal, lower carbon dioxide. So is that what happened? Did coal consumption go down? No. And that is Jevons paradox. What Jevons observed is that the lower cost of production, the lower operating costs of the machine, instead of reducing demand for coal, increased demand for the machines. You could run the machines more cheaply. Therefore, more people wanted the machines. They ran more machines and coal consumption consequently continued to increase at a faster rate. But this isn't just a homily about global energy usage. Let's wind the clock forward by another hundred years. Most of the people watching this video probably drive. Often we drive to work. We drive to see family members. We drive to go on holiday. We drive for outings. But what happens when a busy trunk route is out of operation? Perhaps there's been a serious accident and the police have closed it. Perhaps it's being maintained. What does that do to traffic speeds? Well, on the face of it, we'd expect traffic speeds to go down. So is that what happens? No, you probably suspected, having talked about Jevons paradox, that something odd would happen when we close a major trunk route through a town or a city. This is Bress's paradox. And while Jevons was working in the 1860s, Dietrich Bress published his observations in the 1960s. He found that if traffic is going too slowly, then adding a new extra trunk road slows it down further. Because what happens, 
you create more capacity, more people will want to get into their cars, therefore you get more traffic and slower movement. On the other hand, if you take a major trunk route out of operation, everyone has to find a new route. And over a period of time, people find lots of different alternative routes and traffic starts to flow faster. And of course, because the main route is out of operation, it's also true that some people will opt for an alternative to getting in their cars. In an earlier video, I talked about one of the primary roles of a project manager as being about problem solving. And my primary conclusion from Jevons and Bress's paradoxes is that if you are faced with a problem, don't just look for the easy, obvious route out of it. Don't try and make something simpler. And as project managers, we know often that if we try to introduce additional resources to get us through a bottleneck, it just slows the project down because we have to invest time in briefing those resources, supporting those resources, guiding those resources, training those resources, which paradoxically means more people working on our project, slower progress. Don't choose the obvious route. Don't tread the same path that everybody treads. Think carefully and look at all of the alternatives and evaluate them. And be aware of the law of unintended consequences. We intend to get traffic flowing faster, so we create an extra lane. And as a result, traffic slows down. Put another way, I'll quote my father who taught me more important things about project management than I ever learned in training courses or delivering projects or from project management books or methodology guides or bodies of knowledge. And my father said, more haste, less speed. Slow down, take your time, and that will optimize your project process. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give us a thumbs up. Why not subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. And to make sure you don't miss it, why not hit the notification bell as well?